Hello everybody, it is Regulus here, and welcome to, finally, Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. That's right guys, this only just came out today, and we're going to start a brand new playthrough in Divinity Original Sin with the Definitive Edition. Now, we are going to attempt Classic Mode, as Explorer Mode may be considered slightly too easy by some watching. So let's give that a go. Jumping straight into this. Apparently I need to allow access to the game. That's frustrating. Let's hope that didn't break my recording. Um, off to a good start, of course. And then we get to pick our character. Now guys, I think I have to go for the classic, instead of making our own character, I think an origin character is in order. So we can get the most out of all story possible. So, there is the Red Prince. There is Sabeel, of course. I'm clicking on the wrong buttons. Iphen Benmezd. Beast. Losi. Fane. And Dwarf, apparently. <laughs> no. Um, okay, one of the origin characters needs to be our pick. Now, we all know I'm a sucker for undead. So I think Fane is going to have to be our origin character. And for those who have not yet seen Fane's origin story, let's have a look. Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed. Ah, oh, I love Fane so much. We're definitely picking Fane. He is our... Oh, he's our character, 100%. So, now we have to pick a class. I should probably let my dog into the room quickly, so she doesn't bark. Come on. Go, welcome back, animals. Okay, we are here and back and ready. And apologies, we need to pick a class. So many to pick from, but what class do we really want to pick? That's the question. So many to choose from, but what suits Fane? I am very tempted, as a matter of fact, for Fane to pick. The one, and only, Conjurer. That's right guys, if you've never seen the Conjurer in play, if you've never played this game at all, Conjurer is a good freaking class. And I think it suits Fane quite well. So we are going to pick him. Oh my goodness, would you look at that. This is Fane, for those who are unsure, we may customize his appearance a little bit. Let's go. Change his face, I think. You need the Fane face. That is his default epic face. We don't want a beard. Hairstyle. I don't think he needs hair. Maybe we'll change the color of his bone though. I kind of like Oasis actually. That is a nice colored bone. And then hair color. Doesn't matter because he doesn't have hair. Now his presets. So for... Um, Conjuring abilities, I do believe intelligence is the way to go. We are going to up that twice for that. Combat abilities. Now, obviously, summoning is our go-to. Uh, we don't... Oh, do we want anything in leadership? I think we'll just go two in summoning. And here, since he will be our main playing character, we are going to go persuasion as our main civil ability. And then Conjure Incarnate, Dimensional Bolt, and Elemental Totem. Let's get rid of our Dimensional Bolt. 
Maybe a risky move, but we'll give Farsight Infusion to our Incarnate. That's right. And guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it will all start to make sense soon. And I think Pet Pal is honestly the best thing to start with, 100%. Tags, Mystic and Scholar. I think we've got to maintain, you know, some of these, some of Fane's tags. Now, what instrument do we want in the background? Ooh, let's go cello. And you know what? We're actually going to switch this back to his default, which I believe is ivory, but I want to make sure. Yeah, let's go back to the default ivory, because honestly... It's Fane. We need to maintain Fane as much as we can. Let's start the game, guys. The obviously issues of playing as an undead character. Uh, poison, which is a good thing. Poison heals you, but any healing abilities will hurt you. You also, if you get recognized without a mask, people will be scared of you and possibly attack you. As well as you can use your little bony fingers for lock picking. I really like the perks of undead, so it's another reason for choosing Fane. Now I'm going to try not to talk too much over dialogue, but it's very hard not to because I'm so excited to play this game again! And like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed, the rebel panicked, the carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead I became part of their story. Ooh, Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. I'm hyped, guys. You do not understand. This is literally one of my favorite games. I know it only came out last year, but it is possibly one of my favorite games of all time. I'm so excited to be playing it again on this channel. Oh my god, you guys don't understand. Five new skills gained. Oh, I have never started as Fane. Oh, hang on. You're chatting? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Ooh, different UI in this definitive edition. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. So that dialogue is new. She never used to speak to us and then let us out of this in the previous version of the game. So already some new stuff popping up. I love it. Oh my god, actually. Ooh, grinning skull. I'd had a mask to hide my bones as well as yours. Maybe I'd still be walking around today. So we got the grinning Thank skull you. talking to us. There can't be many curios like that in the world. So, yes, we do start off with the mask of shapeshifting, which you only start off with as Fane, I believe. Otherwise, you have to craft it or find it later in the game. And I'll show you guys what that does in a second once we're done talking to the grinning skull. Um... Well, I crafted it myself, using a tool to rip the faces from mortal creatures. I'm going to try not to voice Fane too much, because he does actually have a voice. And I don't want to ruin Fane's image. Okay. Admit that your voice is something of a trick. Your words and tone are projected directly into the minds of others. That's what Fane does. But Fane's voice is majestic. I love it. Let's keep that mask on. The living don't take kindly to seeing their future staring back at them. I wish, honestly, that every line of dialogue you said when you played as an Origin character would come out as their voice, because that would be so good. Anyway, guys, this is me currently. Fane, I do have this crazy-looking mask on, as you can see, which is a bit mental. If you don't know what it is, let me show you. You can see down here in our hotbar, we have some abilities. Turn into human. Turn into lizard, turn into an elf, or turn into a dwarf. So if we click turn into human, something has changed. Boom. You are you, but more. You are another, but not. You look to your hands, your belly, your feet. Flesh you don't know, molded into unfamiliar shapes. You cradle your aching head where another's memories and wisdoms mix with your own. 
Your fingers trace a line from your head to your face, feeling not the creases of the mask, but the porous surface of new skin. You lower your arm, blink twice, and step forward in this new guise. Now you may notice, we do still have our mask on, we don't look much different. You can see in the top left though, that we are now a human. And I do believe that if I come up here to the headpiece, we can actually hide it. And you can see now we are a human. We were undead before, and now we're not. Again, any of the races we can transform into, let's go for a lizard. Look at me. Now let's maintain our facade as a lizard for this starting part, so that everyone thinks I am indeed a lizard. And this is definitely a new part of the game too. Holy moly. Actually, surprise, there's already new stuff that I wasn't expecting. Seven gold in the desk. Since we're using a controller, we can use our hold A button to search, which is very helpful. So this is just like a little little desk area. Nice to know. Uh, ball and chain. Can't pick that up by the looks of it. Can I go through here? No. So this is, like I say, just the looks of it, nice little tutorial area to kind of teach you how to move around and, you know, get the get your bearings. A toppled crate is blocking the doorway. Face the crate and press X to bring up the action menu. Okay, so we can move the crate over there and then move... Probably didn't actually need to move that crate now that I think about it, but, you know, move that crate and then... We can go through this die. door. Freight or food. What? This is such a new thing. There was never an animal sty here before. Crazy. They've re redone the ship. Her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the ship. What? Why would she do that? I have pet power. I can talk to her. Oh, there we go. Not much meat on your bones. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm disguised as a lizard. You shouldn't be able to tell. Poke the sheep's ample belly with your toe. Remark she's got more meat on her than you do. But look at the flies. Burn wisdom. Flies know when a creature will die. And it's around your head they're buzzing. Not mine. Well, truth is, I am already dead, so that's fair. Um, I've always never been sure how I feel about the animals talking in this game, because it's just a bit weird, but it's so charming as well. I actually kind of love it, and I'm unsure about it at the same time. Advanced selection cycling. Okay, cool. Since we're using a controller, it's telling us how to cycle through the different things. Ooh, some armor, some gold, nothing. Nothing. You know, we've got to check everything. A key. I think we may actually need that key to get in here. Wonderful. There is so much to do in this starting area. I love it. Yep. Okay. I've, I have actually used a controller before in this game, so I actually know most of the controls for it. But we got a letter, which we are going to have a read of. Whoa, this is a new inventory. I love it. Love everything. It's so good. Let's have a read. Orders from the guard, Stuart. Steward. Important. It's come to my attention again that several of you are bypassing the cargo sliding... Whoa. Bypassing the cargo hold security measures by sliding boxes onto the pressure plates. This will not do. The purpose of these measures is to acquire, require the presence of at least three magisters at a change of shift. Any deviation will result in at least one magister getting thrown overboard. Make sure it isn't you, Magister C1. Okay, so these pressure plates are what is required to go through the door by the looks of it. They sure are. So this is definitely a tutorial. I actually really like it. There was not really any t proper tutorial in the game before. It was kind of just, hey, let's let's play a game, you know? Oh, damn it. I was hoping we could get through. Okay. So... Can we grab one of these boxes? Rubbish. Well, we can pick it up. That's helpful. And then... There's probably something else we could have moved. But the box will do. Okay, let's drop the item. 
Then move it onto the pressure plate. Then we can go through the lovely door into our next room. Okay. Oh, we went through some oil. So oil will slow you down and can also be lit on fire. And there's other prisoners in here. Interesting as heck. Electric discharge scroll. Oh, there's a magister down here. So in other words, probably don't let these guys out straight away because he he's asleep. But I should probably try talking to him in case he's, you know, going to wake up and get real angry. I don't... What was I trying to do? The Magister Guard snorts and sniffles as he sleeps. You're almost impressed that one man can make such a phlegmy racket. Boop the guard's nose. A hundred percent I'm going to boop the guard's nose. My shift over. <laughs> you need to relieve me. Wait, you're no Magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy lizard? Choose your words carefully. My fists ache to meet a new face. Okay, tell the truth. Wits, um, constitution. Well, we have slightly more constitution, so let's use tell him you heard yelling coming from above, he needs to get up there. Success! Damn. If it's not one thing, it's another. And no way I can trust those fools to deal with any nonsense on their own. Can't leave the prisoner alone, though. He's been nothing but trouble, I hear. Uh, we should use our intelligence persuasion. Remark on the sturdiness of the bars, the cell bars. The prisoners not going anywhere. That's all I need to do here. Just don't let that cage rascal fool you. You can't trust him as far as you can throw him. Cool. So you're out of here. And then we can have a nice little chat to him. Because I feel like we may get some sort of benefit from freeing him. What do you reckon? Hello, Hemwar. Hey, get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Uh, what are you exactly you in for before I do anything rash? A fair trade, I should think. Uh, why are you in this cage in the first Your place? Guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. I don't trust him, but this is a new part of the game, and I'm a hundred percent agreeing to help to see what happens. Leave a report, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. Okay. The prisoner's buoyant voice darkens as his gaze finds the sunken hollows that once held your eyes. Ah, oh, freedom. Tastes better than wine. I'm nothing if not a man of my word. And I did give my word I'd set you free, lad. Say your prayers. Oh, he's gonna try and kill me. <laughs> the halls await. Well, this is my first battle, I guess. And he gets to go first. That's not good. Oh, I'm actually really glad I wasn't standing in the oil. But he doesn't realize that I have an incarnate that I can make a fire incarnate. And now he is definitely gonna die. And we'll also... Wow, I have a Razer Chroma keyboard. And it is flashing like crazy because of... Um, it's it's got like a, a sync to this game so every time an awesome spell happens the keyboard flashes like crazy which i wish i could show you guys but obviously i don't have a uh what's it called a keyboard cam oh well that was a good work uh mr totem you helped me out there he had nothing on him oh that was such a waste of time okay can all this fire please subside Thank you. Now, let's open this one just to make sure there's nothing good in here. Doesn't appear to be. Now we should probably also put on our slightly better armor. Well, we probably should have equipped our weapon too, even though we didn't need to use it in the end. Then we should go up through this door. Can we get into here? No, but we can pick the lock. Which is successful. Lovely. Oh, good. We can still use bony fingers even in uh, lizard form, which is actually really good. My incarnate did just die. Which always terrifies me every time it happens because I'm not expecting it. Up to. Source rack? No, I didn't get on the source rack, you crazy fool. 
Minor healing potion. Don't mind if I do. Wait, there was another one? Where was it? It came up when I just scanned. Oh, it's on the bedside table. Oh, this is all poison. Not that it affects me. I am... Oh, actually. Heck yeah. Let me heal up. Let me get that health. Let me get that health. Let me get that health. Nice. We don't need to explode this poison. We can just walk through it. One of the strong benefits about playing as an undead. Oh, bugger me. Okay, I guess we do have to destroy it. Maybe that's how we open the door. Let's use our Dragon's Blaze ability. Boom. Yeah, that didn't work. Why did I think that would work? That's not how this game works. <laughs> Let's just attack it. No, don't pick the lock again. Just attack it. Your weapon isn't worth anything. Might as well just destroy the door. I don't really want to move the carpet. I am on fire too, which is a bit of a shame. Be nice if that could go away. Oh, damn it. Oh, wait, there's a lever for this door. Maybe? Oh, yep. Okay, cool. Well, we just completed our tutorial by the looks of it. So let's leave the tutorial deck and end up where we actually start the game normally. That's exciting. Um, now, none of this stuff appears to be stealing. So we are definitely going to take a small tome. That'll do for now. I don't need to take much more. Gold cup. Don't mind if I do. Now, I think we got... There's also an updated journal, which is like... Great. You know, the journal before was ridiculously messy and now it is not. So maybe we'll actually use our journal this time. Hello, Magister Siwan. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest. And he's now, it's, in charge of the law. It's always funny because you can trade with lit like pretty much any character in the game that you're talking to. You know, this person is imprisoning me, but I can still say, Hey, can I have that mug of wine? <laughs> You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Okay. Um... So this is a Lucian-class frigate, I can tell with my scholar abilities. But why? Why? Because we're at sea, of course, and have been for several days. What? Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. Oh. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Befuddled? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. Now, I'm not sure if I'm tripping, but I swear this game looks better. Like, it already looked really good. But now, I feel like it looks so good. I'm gonna leave. Go through. Oh, this game. Oh my god, guys. I'm gonna be gushing over this game the whole time we play. I hope you know that. But, oh, I love it. Magister Waters, what has happened? There is a dead man. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and follow the source that did this. Um... I'm gonna tell you that... Uh, no, I'm gonna say that I might have been the killer. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Um... Maybe I can. I'm a sorcerer after all. On you, aunt. Shut up! Don't Listen, tell me that! I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? One gold coin? Um... Well, I'll let you know if I hear anything interesting. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. So I can't loot the body yet. Um, 
The hatch is blocked. Nope, okay. I'll need to find another way. Let's open the door to the main main room of all the other prisoners, shall we? Now there is lots of prisoners in here. All of the companions we can actually get at some point. And I don't think I'm going to speak to them all because there's all a lot of kind of conversation that... Actually, you know what? Let's have a chat. Because some of you guys may have never seen this game before and I want to everyone to get the full experience of Divinity. Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. Watch your back, Whoa. you fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp you found. Well, you're wrong, dude. Whoa, look at this guy's outfit. He's like a, a red KKK member, Magister Victor. He looks crazy. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning. <laughs> a man named Ifan beckons again. Yeah, sure. Hey, bud. In and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Mm. Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifa. And now, you. <laughs> um, also, the narrator. Such a good narrator. My god. Again, I'm just gushing over random crap that doesn't matter. Uh, why does the- why do the magister suspect you of murder? More's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Oh, Iphon was his commander. I've never played through with Iphon. I think I'm going to have to this game. The tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Johnny Big Pants. <laughs> How did you find yourself at the mercy of a subordinate? Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. So interested in the murder though, Ifan. Did you do it? No. Oh, the dead fair enough. Finn, is it? I had no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Do you know anything about where we're headed? Fort Joy, I've heard? The Joy? I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Bishop Alexander. I'd like to meet the ringmaster himself. I'd like to meet Alexander. Show him exactly what I think of his bloody divine order. No. Um. Yeah, Easy. I'll say that. <laughs> I might think the same. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. Well, I'll kill Vic too. I'm a you can crazy man. Over there. I'm fame. Lezard. What's your name? Oh, he thinks I'm actually a lizard. I'm impressed. Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name. Uh. Yeah, let's say this. Tell him your name is in a language that he has never heard. And cannot pronounce, but he may call you Fane. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously. Then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Voluminous? What a word. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. Okay. So that was Ifan Ban Mezd, one of our possible companions. You'd end up a prison Next up, let's have a chat to Sabeel. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Ah, uh, what are you doing? Rolling dice. <laughs> that's fair. Deciding fates. <laughs> oh, well in that case. Whose fate are you deciding though, Don't Sabeel? Worry, honey. It isn't yours. Well, I'm glad. She looks you up and down with the merest hint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never though. Oh, calm down. Calm down. Uh, if you can decide fates with dice, can you read the future in cow entrails as well? She eyes you quite serious. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it too. So if you don't know as well, elves, if they eat human body parts, as you can get in this game, uh, we'll get memories of that person, the person whose human body parts it was. Your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. 
Shall I? I don't see why not. Have a lick. She gives your eyes <laughs> a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Efficient, like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. Watching, staring at them, hoping that none would stare back. You were thinking of flesh. Or, to be rather more precise, the pleasures of the flesh. Those that have eluded you for so long. Oh. Um... Oh, jeez. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot that that's what I was doing last night. That's your mm. me. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. So she knows I'm undead. Don't lick and tell. Good, I hope no one licks and tells. <laughs> that would be strange. Um, okay, next up. Beast. Our little pirate hatted man. The dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Um, what am I meant to be hearing, friend? The ship, of course. Quiet and listen to the sounds the of the ship. The sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. And? The ship. Uh... The ship sounds angry. They're trying to capsize. No, the sea sounds angry. It's trying to capsize the ship. He cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger. It's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. So, we can tell Beast is obviously some sort of sailor. Close your eyes and let the ambient sounds of the ship fade away. Just like that. Squeak! Oh. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. Uh, what are you so excited about? There's nothing more than a rat. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Is that good? God, my beard. That means if we've been travelling for... Yes. Only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. <laughs> You're incredible, Mr. Beast. Wait, that's a YouTuber. Ignore me. You're incredible, Beast. Tell him you shouldn't talk like that about such a magnificent beard. What? Um, yeah, sure. Ah, so you have eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate. Even here. Why are you so excited about reaching Fort Joy, though? I've heard nothing good about it. Uh, no, indeed, boy. That ain't my final destination. Oh, you got a plan to your base. He back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Uh, if you're hatching an escape plan, I want in, dude. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Okay. Thanks for the conversation. Next up, guys, we have possibly one of the best companions of all time, the Red Prince. Well, well, what have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. I'm going to humor him, and let's see where this leads. Mm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Um... Fame. Tell him it's been an, es an eternity since you've tried. In which case, I take it your cuisine is limited to the introduction of eggs to hot water. How disappointing. <laughs> On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Um, stick a thumb through one of the holes in your garb and say, 
These provide cool in the summer. Yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. <laughs> On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Uh, rubbing your chin. Tell him you're trying to recall the last time you bathed. What month is this? Just as I thought. That explains what's besieging my nostrils. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? I did terribly in all of them. your own testimony, you have the taste buds of a dung beetle, the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit, and your personal hygiene reminds one of a carcass rotting in the sun. <laughs> I just get so angry. It won't do at all, see? I'm sad to say I must deny you the opportunity to be my slave. What? Ever so sorry. I don't get to be his slave. Assume a sad face and tell him you're mightily disappointed. I know, I know, but... You just don't have what it takes. A good slave's made of sterner stuff, I'm afraid. Oh, Still, damn. Your skills, Missed out on being a slave. For position in a lesser household than mine. You keep dreaming, you hear? I'll keep dreaming, Red Prince. All my doggos are shaken. And last companion, but not least companion, is our friend Losi. Oh, there you are. Um, husband. Oh, okay. Guess I'm your husband. Charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes, that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Ooh, allergic to singing. Okie dokie. Um, well, I'm gonna play along, take her arm with a grin, and tell the children they must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Spouse of mine. <laughs> Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. Mm. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Of course. That's true enough. Shake her hand. Losi, or Losa, you presume? You presume right. Do you know anything about the murder that happened on board by any chance? Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Uh, you ought to have a look. Tell her she ought to have a look around with you. You can watch each other's backs. Yes, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for me. <laughs> you take care though. So I think. Her eyes oh. to an unnatural black. Oh. Grayish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. Ooh, change of pace here. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Oh, something dangerous is going on with Losa. I think we're going to have to pick Losa because, oh, she's such a cool character. She's got so much personality. Oh, they all do. Oh, my God. How am I going to pick who I want? I have no idea. But let's head through because no one else in this room really matters. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Look, I can trade to this guy too. Want some raw red meat? Yeah, mad. Buy it off a of Magister. Okay so far. Um, I'm fine. Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Okie dokie. Let's head into the stern room. Ooh, what's going on over here? Standing at the center of the room. And here we have Windigo. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella. Ooh, it was her. Yes, I did. Ooh, Windigo. So she is the girl, the lady I believe from the intro sequence. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. Uh oh. There are others whose lives must end. You talking about me? Yeah. God, the woman's mad. She's mad. There, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. Address the sorcerer and ask her what she meant by there are others whose lives must end, although she definitely means me. It's your journey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> around for its finale, though, because... Oh, her voice is so raspy. My so goodness. She took her collar off? I'm just about to create a scene. Uh-oh. Stop doing it, quickly. If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. 
She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Oh, here we go. Precisely. And it's fighting time. But not for long, boys and girls. Because fighting time didn't last very bloody long, did it? We all got knocked the heck over. And I do believe all the Magisters die. Oh, I'm turning back into Fane. She stole it. If these savages see me without it, they will take my skull. <gasps> they took... He took my mask. She took my mask. Are you kidding me? Okay, I can probably turn my mask back on now. I didn't know she takes the mask at that point. That makes so much sense. Now I'm not going to be able to get it till you normally get it in the game. Oh, that's so crazy. I never knew that. We're just going to take all the food because food is good. It's not that good, but it's good. All the same. Um. My God, I can't actually believe she took it. I didn't actually know that happened. That's so cool. I love it. Oh, this game is beautiful. Let's get this. Let's equip the wand, shall we? A wand, and we'll equip a shield for now because we don't have a second wand. Okay, can we get into this? Oh, I'm on fire. I didn't even realize. Let's attempt to pick this lock. Can we pick the lock? Yeah. We need to like heal up or something. Oh, fevery level too low. That's a bit of a, a shame. Should probably loot these guys while I'm here. Loot you, you didn't have anything, and you. Lovely. Now, a bedroll. We haven't missed a bedroll at any point, have we? What's requisition, actually? Let's take all of this stuff and go for a bit of a read, shall we? Uh, okay, so that's just, like, food that they're trying to get in. Good to know. Now, yeah, I don't think we've missed a bedroll. Oh, wait, no, there's bedrolls over here. We weren't focusing on looting because we were too busy talking. But we can actually come down here and grab a bedroll, which is literally the best way to heal. There we go. Now we're on full health. Probably uh, loot all the magisters too. Oh, no, the sheep died. It's a bit of a shame. Let's loot it, though. Now we do come back to this place, so I'm not sure why I'm looting. Everyone is knocked over and dazed, apparently, but I'm I'm up and ready, and you know I'm not too fast, apparently. I'm the only one. I'm just out and about. Everyone's knocked out, and I'm just like, hey, let's just go upstairs. Oh, there's a doggo in there. That isn't good. Let's move that to there. Put that water, that uh, fire out. Hello, dog. Pours desperately at its snout. It winces as it draws blood from its wet black nose and continues scratching. Uh, how about you get out of here, dude? The ship is going to sink. You for the first time and snarls. The hairs on its back prickling as it lowers itself into a lunge. Don't try and fight me, dude. Sorcerer. Sorcerer. <laughs> and pours at its nose once more. Can't smell. Can't breathe. Too much sauce. Too much. So they're source hounds, so they sniff out source. So when there's a massive influx of source, they are in Struggle Street. Um, tell the dog you're not the one who did this. You'd stop it if you could. The dog whines and continues pawing at its nose. So unfortunately, I don't think there's anything we can do for the poor dog. Can we get through here? We sure can. He eyes the collar circling Ooh. your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. That guy looks terrified. Look at him, he's shaking. Uh Motion to the structure around you. What's going on here? What have you oh, seen? You don't know. Mutiny. Did that witch fix your collar too? Intelligence persuasion. Tell him there is no mutiny. You almost died at this woman's hands. Lovely. Find a place to hide and stay there. Okay, but let me loot this place first, please. Because there might be some good stuff in here that you guys aren't going to use if you're staying on this boat. Uh, okay, we did just pick up a journal. The smeared ink makes the journal difficult to read, but you managed to make out much of the latest entry. Which apparently it's not even going to let us read. That's a bit annoying. I was hoping we'd get a nice little read of that. But there is a, a letter here for us. My sweet... Ugh, my sweet Stefan... As, as I write this letter, we near the isle. By the time the owl delivers it, I will be but a day away. I've heeded Alexander's orders, just as you said I should. 
but I think of Lucian often. Would the divine have condoned this? Would he have blessed us as we ripped children from their mothers? Can this be the only way? I feel cold, inside and out. Of one thing I am certain, your arms will warm me when I find you again. With love, Rix. Now I did definitely voice Rix as a bit of a lady. I'm not sure if it's a lady. Or if one of the guys in here is Rix. Let's find out. Uh, you are Magister... R oh, okay. Well, he's the coward, so we'll keep him. <laughs> we'll keep that voice. This letter contains a set of instructions for transporting sorcerers to a place called the Joy. But someone has inked an angry black line from the top left to the bottom right. Okay. There's a bust of Alexander here, which we can't take because it is going to be way too heavy. Might as well take all the tomes. I don't think they have anything going on. Oh, they do? There's a bunch of books there. We're not going to read every book we pick up, or we will be here for six years. Maybe we'll have a book reading episode if you guys want that. that I'm not sure. I don't think you will. But if you do, we might have a book reading episode. How exciting! No, but if you guys are watching this and you want me to read the books in the videos, let me know. Because I'm happy to read them if you guys want to see that. I just don't want to waste the time reading them if you guys are more interested in the playing the game and, you know, more story stuff and fighting stuff. So, we are now in here with a bunch more dead boys who we must loot. Everything you can pick up is worth it. Good gods. Something's pounding on the hole. And I think we know what that is. I don't know if you guys do, but I definitely know what that is and we will... Oh, you had to bloody step in it to touch it, didn't you, you fool? Oh, he had a letter on him. We will read notes, though, because they might be a bit more important than books. Murtoff. Deaf fog barrels have been locked down in storage. Stay out. You and Rick's both. If anyone starts fooling around down there... It'll be lights out. Captain Callowan. Okay, so that, I believe, Fane is normally in that room. If you're not playing as Fane, of course. Which we are. Now, we can go... The marking on the door oh. was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You recognize the symbol immediately for what it is. A warning of death fog within. You press your Death fog. That's another thing that I will tell you guys about. And you suddenly feel grey. The touch leaves you numb, dumb. So death fog basically is a super potent, poisonous, deadly fog that will kill anyone unless you're undead. If you're undead, you can survive in death fog. No bloody problem. This is why I consider um, undead definitely one of the best races and Fane is just an even better way to play undead so you can see this is death fog death it fog. looks terrifying Still, <laughs> look we can just step in it any other person that steps in death fog will just straight up die instantly it's a bit unfortunate that there doesn't seem to be anything of worth in there oh there's a sword there though which we will take and continue on our journey. Oh my god, guys. This game. I've actually played this ship bit for so long. Because I... When I was playing... Like, in my own time. I'd install mods to skip the ship bit. But it feels good to play it again. Okay. And time to head up the stairs to the deck. Here we have... This guy just got destroyed instantly. Okie dokie. Now, you gotta love surfaces... Make ourselves a poison incarnate right there. And we also need nice little poisonous totem to fire at the vicious voidlings. Now we will go for our poison attack because it'll hit both of them. Then have a bit of a whack of you. This is also why um, summoning is so fun because you do get that like companion type unit. Which is just is such a good kind of thing to have. You can summon, I believe, one incarnate and up to three totems at a time, which can get incredibly powerful if you stack that up. We'll also give our fire sight infusion to our incarnate, which allows him to shoot a certain ability, I believe, which is not too helpful when you're up close, but it is great when you're at a distance. 
and we destroyed those voidlings. No pro- don't go down the ladder, you fool. Oh my goodness. Back up, we just want to loot the knight. Hey, a fireball scroll, that's exciting. And no one else had anything on them. There's a lot of poison. Actually, I'm undead, I forgot. I can go straight through poison, no problem. Oh my goodness, so everything's currently on fire. That guy up there, Captain Calwin, just got destroyed. Actually, can we go up there? Oh, we have too much in our inventory. Let's throw this. Can we throw it to there? Nope. Okay, we'll just drop it then. And I've never actually gone up here to investigate Captain Calwin's body. This has always been like fire and all this crazy stuff going on. So I've never actually been up here. Look at the size of that tentacle. That is some hentai ass stuff going on there. Wait, what am I doing? No, I don't want to steer the ship. Captain Calwin, some gold and... Oh, Captain Calwin's a girl. Oh, I did not realize. No, stop walking. You're done. You're done. Okay, cool. We actually went and looted that, which we've never done before. Again, this playthrough is all about doing the things you don't normally do in Divinity Original Sin 2. And it rhymes as well. Look at this tentacle, dude. This Kraken is crazy. I love it. So, lifeboat. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. He said there were other people down there. We, we need to help them. I agree with this kid. You're a coward. Okay, lovely. Now we get to go down and save our friends that we already made lovely friendships with earlier on. First, we will loot all of these. Oh. A bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. What happened in this room? Oh, it's an alive guy. One of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. Um, she'll figure out who did it. Always does. Um, I'm, I don't think this guy realizes what happened to the ship because everyone else is dead and he's just chilling here saying his normal dialogue. Is that meant to happen or is that a like a glitch? I'm not sure. Let's investigate Finn. So we've got a chunk of flesh from him which we can consume. If we um, play as an elf or get an elf. So this is Magus to see one, but we won't talk to her until we go in here to save our friends. Once again, we can conjure our incarnate, which you can do on any surface, even if it's not a special surface. And it will still um, summon. You just won't get any special abilities from it. We can go have a whack of the Void Hatchling. Can't get a second hit off, but that's alright. We get to see all of our possible companions now using some of their abilities. And, you know, get a, a bit of a look at what we might be getting on our turn, our team. So you see Beast there absolutely destroyed. Oh no, this Void Woken's gonna beat me up. You better do something, Sabeel. Oh, good. Oh, you missed. They who are about to oh, here we go. Red Prince. Fortifies. So that's an ability that gives you more physical armor. And then... Oh, a Molotov grenade. Why did you throw it at Losi? That's a bit harsh. <laughs> I feel bad for her. Okay, yep. Attack my incarnate. That's fine. And here we go. Iphon, what are you going to do, friend? Nothing. I'm glad to see that Ivan did the least on the team. When's it my turn? Why does this void work and keep getting turns before me? How is my initiative so bad that I get like no turns? What? If I die in this part in the game, I'm going to be so annoyed. 
Oh, come on, Red Prince. Okay, come on, guys. Don't kill my incarnate. Okay, good. You got that void. And you drunk a healing potion. Smart. Iphan is encouraging me. Thank you. Because now it's my turn to summon another totem. Let's summon a blood totem. Oh my god, it's one of the most badass looking totems. Would you look at that? What the heck? That is mental. Mental, mental. Okay. Well, we might as well... That void hatchling is dead. No, don't move. Oh, you bloody waste of space. Let's just give him the far side infusion then. Oh, that blood totem is going to... Oh, destroyed. Now, I don't think these void guys have, like, much worth looting, really. I'll just loot these two. Cool. Done. Now, let's have a bit of a sleep just to heal up. And we will go and talk. It's magic to see one. You want to put on this damn collar. I'm gonna take this book. Can I do anything with this book? Oh, okay, yep, we can. There's another book for us. But let's talk to Magister Siwan. I can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. Uh, look around for some way to help her. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of strong-smelling tincture. Yeah, take the cloth and hold it tight to the wounded, to the wound, and try and stem the bleeding. Blood quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister Siwan's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. Hold the cloth tighter to the wound. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. Siwan clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Ooh. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Uh-oh. Continue holding the cloth to the wound. Take Siwan's hand and try to help her stand. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. Uh-oh. And then we all died. Oh, goodness gracious me. Apparently I can run. What? I swear you normally get knocked over at that point. But I didn't. Oh, look at him go. Look at the size of it. It is such a cool creature. Look at that. Oh, do you? Rise. Another little cutscene. We lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. Hi, Judge Oriven. Imagine if that was the end. Like, that was the end of the game. <laughs> you just play like that on the ship for like 40 minutes and then that's it. But no, not quite. Because some mysterious voice has a plan for us. Oh, look at this new loading screen as well. That is new art. That is so nice. Oh my goodness. Everyone looks so crazy and strong and epic oh the divinity music here we go where are we now that's right we're at the joy lying on the beach well, and we are up lone survivor. how good is that Depends anyway guys that's right this video has been going on for basically an hour now if you guys are enjoying divinity original sin 2 definitive edition so far please leave a like let me know i'm so keen to keep playing this episode not episode this game for you guys let me know if you like these long episodes all the rest leave heaps of support on this video guys because it is the first video the one that anyone will see if they try to check out this series and hope you guys enjoyed this so so much i had a ball and i'm gonna keep playing and oh having so much fun it's such a good game Anyway, guys, peace out.